G'day guys, my name's Orad Taz and today we're going to install the Dynatech 3000 Performance Ignition on Dizzy by Project XVS 650. Really, really excited about this one, guys. The Dynatech 3000 is a programmable TCI CDI ECU replacement for the stock TCI on the XVS 650. What it allows you to do is set your uh, rev limiter and also your ignition advanced curve. They're normally about $480 in Australia, and I picked this one up on eBay for $99 uh, from the US. It was listed as second hand, but it really does not look like at all. It's been on a bike, so my guess is that it's more new old stock than it is actually second hand. Absolute bargain. I was stoked to get it, and I'm stoked to make this video. What I received was the instructions, the ignition advanced curves, and also the switch settings uh, where they need to be situated to sort of set the RPM limit and also the advanced curve. On the back of the device, there is the switches. The first three are for the RPM limit and the second three are for the ignition advance. I've come to the conclusion that initially I'm going to try 7,500 RPM as my rev limit and I'm going to try curve 3. Curve 1 and 2 are for stock bikes, 3 and 4 are for jet kits, Five, six, seven are for heavily modified bikes, and eight is retarded ignition for nitrous and turbo. So I'm thinking with the level of uh, modification that I've got on Dizzy at the moment, it's probably curve three, and we might try curve four down the track. So curve three, off, on, off, off, on, off. So, and for seven and a half, off, on, off. So again, we lift, lift the middle one. That's pretty much all there is to setting it. Now, we're going to take off side cover, remove the battery, and replace the stock TCI with the Dynatech Performance Ignition. And then we're going to take the bike on a road test. Let's go point of view and get this thing installed. We'll just pop that aside for a second. We'll take the key out so there's no accidental issues. And we'll grab a five, five mil Allen key to get rid of the bolt holds the side cover on. Push that aside. Pop the side cover out. This has got a port for a tender. So I'll just sit that there. Right, so this bike has had numerous modifications over the years, so you can see additions to the wiring harness, some are neater than others. All the clips to get this dust cover out. There's the stock battery. We'll take the 
negative terminal terminal off first. Positive terminal. dust cover and see the stock unit in place there Phillips head again to remove the screws that hold it in Disconnect the plugs by just pushing down. This okay, so reverse. Click. These are sized and grooved. So there's no way you can install them upside down or back to front. So it's just the reverse of what we did. Because it's an American company, the instructions are really comprehensive, they're actually really good, and that installed exactly as it says that it will in the instructions. So it recommends that we start the bike before we put it back together, and it should start better, easier than what it does stock. Turn our petcock on. fuel pump yeah. it absolutely jumped to life which is awesome so we'll put it back together and then we'll take it for a ride to use our butt dyno to see if there's any improvement in performance so guys, we're just out road testing the Dynatec 3000 performance ignition for the XVS 650. Yeah, straight away it started up easier, it idled easier, it came off the uh, choke very quickly and it feels smoother there's strangely the bike feels smoother it feels less laboured and higher speeds. Oh yeah, you can feel the increased rev limit. This is not a Harley, it does like to rev a fair bit more. 
than other V twins. And just lifting that rev limit to seven and a half thousand gives it noticeably more pull at the top end. Three, two, one. quicker to 100 we'll go on our favorite road it's got a few twisties on it and just see how it performs Noticeably better. Feels like it's got more throttle response too. Comes onto the throttle noticeably quicker. Just gotta remember that it's not the best handling. Or the best brake bike in the world. So I'm running the stock airbox. The Canon filter straight into that stock airbox. On the needle, fourth clip down. 22.5 pilot and 120 main two loops cut off the carb spring the slide spring and now the Dynatec 3000 with plus 500 rev limit you can add another couple of thousand rpm but I'm pretty sure without modification this thing would give up the ghost you probably wouldn't ever get anywhere near it through valve bounce or float and ignition curve three Very cool, very cool indeed. Also gives a lot more tunability to the bike. If you were going to modify it or even get it dyno tuned, it just gives the operator more options. Increased RPM limit just allows you to change right at its peak. Doesn't mean you have to bounce it off the rev limit on every change. This means that you can change right at the peak of power.
over and just make sure it's not on fire or anything crazy. Yep, still well within acceptable temperature range. If anything, it's actually probably cooler than what I would expect considering how hard I've just been flogging it. There's the bike. Would I buy Dynatech 3000 for a stock bike? Possibly not for full price. For any bike, for the discounted price I got, absolutely. For a stock bike, would it be worth $480 in Australia? It's considerably cheaper in the US where it's made. Not sure. For a bike that you're playing with and that you've rejetted and you're doing work to, absolutely. Absa freaking lootly because uh, that's all there is to say, really. My name's Alright Taz. Till I see you next time, I'm out.